Hello everyone and welcome to Intro to Hydroponic Strawberry Growing via the Nutrient Film Technique. I'm John Harden and I had a lot of fun putting this project together but it does have an alternate title. How to spend $800 to kill $80 worth of strawberry plants. With just a little bit of time and money I turn those beautiful green babies into decaying husks of sadness. This slide is going to have everything you're going to need to build your own nutrient film technique hydroponic system. Things you'll need to get started include a stud finder so that you can find where to put the eye screws into the wall uh, right into a stud. You're going to need personal protective equipment and gloves and safety glasses if you want to play safe, which you should. A pocket knife because you'll have to remount some plastic and cut a few things. Uh, drill with a half inch and a 3 16 inch bit and then pipe threading. For the actual nutrient film technique tubes and mounting you're going to want five foot PVC pipes and I wouldn't recommend going less than three inches. Uh, four inches is probably better but I chose two four inch, two three inch, and two two inch with the anticipation I'm going to have different size strawberry plants that I want to get started in the smaller ones before moving to the larger ones. Each one of the PVC pipes is going to require an end cap for each side, and I used multiple different types, mainly because Lowe's was not uh, fully stocked in what I needed, so I made do. A hot glue gun works wonders to make seals, and you'll need that not just for the PVC piping, but where the tube goes into the piping, and then a pack of zip ties. And zip ties is uh, actually a pretty clever solution to a leveling problem, which I'll show you in a subsequent slide. And you're going to need eye screws. They're the screws with the little loop at the end that are at least three inches thick because they're going to go straight into the stud once you find it. Next are pumps. You're going to need one for air and one for water. Uh, the water pump will have a head on the box which shows how high it can pump up. And you're going to want at least that number of feet or six inches more just to make sure it can pump water from your reservoir up into your NFT. Then you're going to need an air pump with a quarter inch hose. It's just a small air hose. Uh, you usually come with it. If not, you'll have to pick up a pack as well. I had one from a previous hydroponic build, which is extremely overpowered, but you can pick one of these up at the aquarium section of Walmart or a pet store, and it'll do just fine. You're going to need air stones as well so that you can, uh, you can tie into the end of your air tube that oxygenates your reservoir. Now for your reservoir, you're going to want a five gallon food safe bucket with lid. Uh, you're going to want some white duct tape and you're going to need 20 feet of half inch tubing, not just for the reservoir, but to connect your NFT tubes together. And in order to keep the tube from crimping and cutting off water flow between the tubes, you're going to want to pick up half inch male and female elbows and you're going to have one pair fewer than the number of NFT rows. And I'll show you a picture of that later, but basically the tube will come out of the tube above the NFT tube, the PVC, and it'll connect to either the male or female elbow, which then screw together. So you, instead of getting a crimp, you get a 90 degree angle, then a 90 degree angle back into the next NFT tube. You're going to want at least six gallons of distilled water and your capacity. You're only going to be able to put four and a half gallons in with the air stone bubbling without it spilling over. But you want to have that extra on hand for uh, topping up your solution, for cleaning your PPM meter, and it's just good to have it on hand, mainly because everyone's water is going to be different everywhere with different minerals in it, and we want a consistent experience. Lastly, you're going to need some landscaping fabric or just something dark, and it'll go with the white duct tape. You're going to want to make sure no light gets through the white bucket because that's how you get algae buildup. So you'll wrap the landscaping fabric around your bucket and then tape it with the white duct tape and that should make it opaque enough that no algae will grow in your solution. For your nutrients and preparation, you're gonna to wanna to go probably to a hydroponic store and find some pH up and pH down. And they're blue and orange bottles, one's an acid, one's a base. And just a few drips in your five gallon solution can change your pH up and down. 
Strawberries like a range between 5.5 and 6.5, so you'll want to get your solution to that range, but to find out if it is, you'll need something to test that pH. You can just go to a, any pool section at Walmart or Lowe's to, pe to find pH testing strips, and they just, a little strip, you dip them in the water, you wait 15 seconds, and you compare them to the, the colors on a chart, and that'll tell you your near approximate of your concentration. But you will need to pick up a PPM meter. It's part per million meter. It measures the, the solids in your solution, the nutrients. And again, at a hydroponic shop, I think one I bought here for is 15 bucks. And I have got my solution currently at approximately 1,100 parts per million. And there's literature all over the internet on what's optimal for strawberry growth. But my strawberry plants, they're in flower, some fruited, and they're all vegging. And your PPM uh, stays the same, but the nutrient solution is different for each one uh, stage of growth. So I just averaged it all and went with the Miracle Grow Liquifeed. It's $10 at Walmart, comes in a two pack, uh, but it's got nitrogen of 9%, uh, phosphate of 4%, and potash of 9%. When you buy any type of fertilizer, you'll find three numbers on it. Uh, that's the nitrogen, phosphate, and potash. And they each do something different for different plants. So just make sure that you, you read up if you're doing something besides strawberries to make sure you've got the right concentration at the right stage of growth. It's also important that you pick up, in my opinion, a liquid concentrated solution. Because if you use a granular or powder solution, it doesn't always mix right. And especially the organic stuff, it gets pumped up and it just doesn't have what the plants need in the concentrations that are, are uniform. And the whole purpose of having a hydroponic setup is having control over the, the nutrient solution and the growth parameters. So do yourself a favor and get yourself some uh, liquid fertilizer. And lastly, concentrated hydrogen peroxide can be found at, at most hydroponic stores. And I'm not advertising it to add to your reservoir, but some people do. But it is a great cleaning agent. So if you pump some through and follow the instructions, make sure you're wearing both goggles and gloves because it'll burn your skin pretty badly. Uh, but it'll clean out all the, the pathogens in your NFT and uh, your, your reservoir before you start growing to make sure that you're not contaminating your plants. And if you don't have any hydrogen peroxide, you can just use bleach, uh, dilute it down to maybe a teaspoon per gallon, uh, and then you'll run it through the system, through your pump for about a half hour, and then you've got to cycle maybe 20, 25 gallons of uh, clean tap water through while you're pumping out the the bleach water and make sure you get all of the residue. Now, if you're going to be growing indoors, you're going to need a grow light. And the type of grow light you're going to need is going to be dependent on how many uh, square feet of grow space you intend to have and how close the light can get to the uh, NFT. There are so many different ways to choose a light that I would just advise going on Amazon, Google. You'd have to do your own research about your available floor space and your budget, really. Now for this build, I did go with a Mars Hydro TS3000. It's got a five foot by five foot vegetative growth space and a four foot by four foot fruiting growth space. And after shipping, it was $502. So they're quite expensive, but it's what's called a quantum LED board, which has all the light spectrum necessary for plants to grow healthy with the inclusion of some infrared diodes. Uh, LED is much, much cheaper and energy efficient than uh, high pressure sodium lights or fluorescent lights, or just trying to use uh, ambient lighting. Your plants won't survive and, and strawberries are very uh, sun thirsty plants. So you have to do your own research. You have to find what is affordable to you. And 
realize that the LEDs can last up to 50,000 hours of use. So if you're using them every day, you get a minimum, you know, 18 hours a day. You get maybe four years of life out of each one at a minimum. And if you care for it properly, which is why we have a box fan here, yeah, you're blowing on the uh, the LED to to cool it down some that can extend a life. And it's highly possible I'll be able to get 10 years out of my $502 light, which is uh, you know, lots and lots of harvests. So for me, it's a worthwhile investment, but you'll have to make that decision for yourself. For your extras, you're going to want to go ahead and pick up at least one electronic timer if you're growing outside and that'll be for your water pump and who chose recommends 15 minutes on 15 minutes off and I've, I've seen that uh, several times but rather than you having to you know plug it in, in and unplug it every 15 minutes you just get yourself a, a timer they're like 10 bucks and some of them are mechanical little you know, switches on it that you pull up or push down others have dials on it or the time on and time off, which is what I use. And others are digital, and some of them even connect uh, via Wi-Fi so you can control your setup remotely. And if you're growing indoors, you're definitely gonna want one for your light as well, because you don't wanna accidentally forget and either not give your plants sunlight when they need it or give them too much. So pick yourself up some electronic timers. Along with that, you get yourself a surge protector. You made an investment in pump both air and uh, water pump but definitely with the light you don't want anything to happen to that so definitely protect your investment uh, and these other extras are just for this specific build but I used fishing line and I ran two lines down the very top of both in it NFT tubes so that I had something to hold the plants in place and it's just a convenient way to avoid having to buy net cups or other things to plug the holes but with that I made 32 holes in the two inch diameter PVC pipes and uh, excuse me 32 total holes so there's 16 in each one and there's eight holes for plants in the three inch and the four inch but I don't have you know 32 small plants right now and so I just use cotton balls to Plug the hole that'll keep debris out and it'll keep light from getting to the, the holes so that you can prevent algae from growing. Next is an unfortunate truth, but you're gonna require some sacrifices to the gods of NFT. Your solution might be wrong, your your air might be limited from your air stones, you might have too high an angle, it might be drowning the plants, uh, too little sunlight too far off of the roots for the plants, any number of things. The first round of plants that you put in are likely gonna have to be ones you've got no emotional attachment to. You may be able to save some of them, but it's... For me at this point, if the strawberries were like the vampires in I Am Legend, then I'm Will Smith. I have killed so many strawberries in the pursuit of this thing that uh, I'm praying they never get sentience because they're coming for me. So the first thing I did was laid the pipes out so that I didn't have to kneel down to drill them, but measured out holes every eight inches and then just took the half inch drill bit and uh, drilled down. And I offset on each side so that when I turn one of the pipes around, the the plants aren't directly above and below each other, they're staggered. And I did that for the 4-inch, 3-inch, and 2-inch diameter pipes. I wanted to do this with the least amount of tools possible, not necessarily the best or the safest way, but for the 3-inch diameter pipes, I just drilled a second hole next to the first one, and then used a back and forth motion with the drill to take out the the PVC between the two of them to make a wider hole and for the four inch pipes I dug an additional two or three holes and then bored them out. You could probably just get a circular bit that would cut them out uh, and make them look pretty but this is you know fast and, and cheap uh, those types of bits you know 20 to 30 bucks. <clears throat> I do wish however 
that I had made three or more holes in every pipe because some of the strawberries, uh, the roots are going to get so big underneath that when I transplant from the two inch to the three inch and the three inch to the four inch that it, it's going to be difficult to pull them out. But the great thing about this system is that it's modular. I can go right now and buy PVC pipes and bore appropriately sized holes and then just unplug the nutrient solution tube from both sides and then uh, mount it in the place of the other one. Or you, you can expand your setup that way too. But right now it's sufficient and I will probably you know, eventually get new PVC and, and bore out the holes. And while these ones that are up there now are down, then I'll, I'll bore out the holes bigger then. I did go back and put in one additional hole between every eight inch gap in the two inch pipes so that I have you know, more grow space for the smaller ones. So you can see that on the left there. But the last thing I did prior to mounting, you know, I've already got the, uh, the eyes set into studs, so I just need to hang, was to use the small drill bit to drill two holes that I can run enough uh, zip line through that I can make little loops. And important note that the round bit required uh, two small holes next to each other to be wide enough for the zip tie to go through. And it was also important for me to mention that the zip ties have a 75 pound strength per and there's one on each side so they can hold 150 total pounds. The, if there is any, genius of this setup is that you don't need to build a frame to hold all of the weight to keep it from toppling over. Making sure that you've got your eye screws into the studs, you can use zip ties to hold the entire thing. So that's what I did. I made a daisy chain from the the top to the second one so that it's not holding the weight of the first one. But other than that, the five bottom tubes are all connected via zip line. And rather than messing with rope to you know make a knot and then seeing how well the angle was going from one tube down to the next one, because it's got a cascade. Using the zip ties, you just tighten a little bit on one side and it'll make the angle for you. And if you make it too sharp, then you got to cut it off. But, you know, you go incrementally up until you got a nice balanced uh, flow from the top pipe to the next pipe to the next pipe, etc. And it's very convenient method of mounting and it's modular enough that you can add additional tubes. Because NFT only requires you know, one tube, but if you've got the solution you've got the light why not maximize your grow space so I know these aren't the prettiest uh, images of PVC I just used a hot glue gun to secure caps on to the end and I've got images of the three different styles of caps I used and again it wasn't by choice uh, it was just what was available at, at Lowe's but I used a half inch drill bit to drill a hole and then I used the pocket knife to to ream out the hole just a little bit because the inside of the tube is a half inch and uh, without having a little bit of additional space the the tube wouldn't fit inside the image on the left is the intake the entire system goes into uh, the nutrient solution flows up through that line at the top of the the very first pipe the four inch diameter one and a uh, consideration i didn't have at the beginning that it's too late to change now was it wasn't necessary for me to put the intake at the top and in fact I had to push the pipe even further through because at the rate that it's coming out of the pump it was hitting the roots of the first plant so hard that it was causing it to splash out and drip so I actually lost one of the holes uh, that I could grow in because I just wasn't paying attention uh, the image on the right that's a three inch cap and the two inch cap the three inch one is actually preferred and I will I'll use that on all the, the subsequent ones but you can actually screw that cap into place and if you used pipe threading instead of hot glue which again this is a mistake after the fact uh, you can prevent leaks without having to seal it so you'll want to be able to open it up to clean out roots or debris that might be piling up and so I would highly advise getting uh, the screw on end caps for your, your uh, NFT project. Again, they didn't have that in the two inch 
uh, form. So this is a third type on the bottom right of the second image. And again, we used the half inch drill bit and then uh, the pocket knife wasn't strong enough to go through that cap. So I had to, to hold it in my hand and bore it out with the, uh, the drill. Very unsafe. If you do that, make sure you wear gloves and you've got a tight grip. But after they were in place, uh, both the caps and the, the tubes inside the caps, then I hot glued to prevent any leaks. So as I mentioned earlier in that extremely long slide, with the half inch tubing, if it was connected directly between the two NFT tubes, it would crimp, it would fold in half and not enough water would be able to, to get through the gap, which would cause a blockage and then a pipe above would fill up and then water would pour out the holes. So for about a dollar fifty two dollars uh, for the pair, you can go and buy half inch tube connectors, male and female, and it doesn't matter which one's which, uh, but you screw them together and use pipe threading to make sure they don't leak and they just connect in so you get that 90 degree into a 90 degree and it allows the the water to flow unabated uh, if you look in the bottom right one you see where i'm going from a four inch tube to a three inch tube and that screw cap is just a different version of a screw cap uh, because the caps add an additional three or so inches and that little square thing which you use to unscrew it adds another inch and a half I had to make the tube a bit longer coming down to connect it, but just keep in mind that's why we're buying 20 foot of tubing. Uh, you're not going to use the whole thing, but you want to make sure you've got enough for you know, makeshift uh, changes that you may need. So this image here is the air quote final build. And the reason it's air quote is because I did add some landscaping fabric on the end of the four inch tubes because they had transparent caps and I didn't want any algae buildup. But apart from that, this is how it looks. I did go in and clip the excess uh, zip tie legs so that it looks a little bit cleaner. But it was mounted and it comes together and I uh, just needed to, at this point, adjust the zip ties to make sure I had good angles for flow. Next thing I did was ran the fishing line uh, up and down the length of the NFT tubes directly over the holes and this allows for some stability for the plants either they can just rest on top of it their leaves are strong enough to hold them they won't get washed down the tube from the, the nutrient solution but if it's a particularly small plant then you just alternate you twist the fishing line around the previous one and then you twist it to go over the one of concern and then you twist it over the, the next one and it, it makes uh, it, it pinches it and holds it in place. Here I wanted to maximize the light for the entirety of the build so I had to measure so that when I hang, hung the light it was shining directly in the center of the the build. Luckily the Mars Hydro comes with little carabiners that can lock into place so those black string in the top left, you can actually pull it, there's one on the, the right as well, pull it and get it so that it's directly facing. There are four clips in the back of the light because it's usually made to hang uh, facing straight down. And because it's a little top heavy, it would touch the bottom of the wall. And not shown in this, this image, I cut some beverage cans in half, some aluminum cans, and put them just touching the back so that it, it pushes it off the wall some so that there's it's not touching the wall directly and the, the angle isn't too far facing down uh, because light it uh, attenuates its uh, strength is reduced i think it's by a square uh, so the further you are away from something or if it's angled down uh, the less energy it's getting so you want to make sure you're, you're facing directly at whatever you're wanting to grow as much as possible you're gonna have to come up with your own best balance solution to your nft setup but whatever you do, just make sure that you balance the light as, as well as possible and you do it in a safe way so that it's not going to knock your light over and lose $502 investment. So the reservoir is fairly simple. You just need a place for the water to return into and a place for it to pump out of. And you need your oxygen tubes to come in and your power cord for your pump to go out. And with the food safe hydroponic 
plastic or just food safe five gallon buckets. They've usually got a little tab that you can rip off so it'll unseal. If you just pushed it down, it would be sealed. But if you rip that piece of plastic off, then it unseals. But if you just break off where that that little helper is for you to rip it off, it creates like a half inch tall by two inch wide gap that your cords can come through without any issues. One thing that's not shown on this image is that I did wrap uh, the landscape fabric on and I used white duct tape to to keep any light from entering the bucket and I did it in a very ugly way but it works. So the first image on the left is what a healthy root system is going to look like for your strawberries when you take them out of the soil and all of the strawberries in my system are Bonnie brand they're either All Star, Quinault or Ozark Beauties and when I got them, they were in heavily saturated soil and they had some for, uh, fungus gnat issues and because the soil was so wet, they started to get root rot. And I bought them as I was building this, expecting myself to be able to, to build it very rapidly and they stayed in the plant, planters too long, didn't get enough natural sunlight, didn't get enough natural uh, nutrients. And you combine that, they went from healthy on the left to, to keeling over. Uh, it was a combination of the learning curve and all those other factors because I had used a granular organic fertilizer which resulted in poor nutrient uh, concentrations. The Another factor was that I didn't really know without the experience of how high off the water the plant should be and some of them were, were too high that the roots weren't getting the nutrients they needed. But all of those plants together uh, represented uh, about a $70 loss but it was you know an expensive lesson and I hope that you know their sacrifice means uh, future gains. Okay so here's what approximately 20 hours and a thousand bucks looks like in strawberry production. I live on a college style apartment complex and I have a hall that goes to my bedroom. So I just mount the, the light and you know you want to put some spaces there so uh, these aluminum beverage cans to uh, keep it from touching the wall just to give it some, some air behind it. A fan down there that's blowing at an angle. It's off right now so it's not so loud that it can't be heard. But here are the strawberries. And there are both batches. The first run has things like, like this poor fellow. Uh, I'm keeping it in there because I've lowered it down into the uh, into the solution more, so it's got a chance to bounce back. But this one down here was part of the first batch, but you see some springiness in the leaves, so it's coming back. Uh, and all the first row is the small plants. And they're doing you know, very well. And it's due to a bounce solution. This guy was almost completely dead from the first one, but uh, yesterday it was laying flat against the pipe. Today it's coming back. You see the, uh, the fishing line I used to keep them, some of them in place, and all of them did. And if you look at the top row, these ones are doing great. Uh, they were already the healthiest and the largest. Uh, the one first on the left there was from the first batch, and uh, again it was laying down yesterday, but it's coming back. So we've got everything balanced. We've got the nutrient flowing in a 15 minute on, 15 minute off setting. Check it once a day to make sure the PPM is good and the uh, pH hasn't changed because they'll use some of the nutrient, they'll transpire, uh, or transpire, they'll aspirate essentially. And it'll reduce the amount of liquid in there. And as they're growing, they're eating some of the nutrients. You gotta just make sure your PPMs are good so that you can add more in. But this first batch uh, should be ready. So over here we've got some. We've got some flowers growing back there. I know it's tough to see. The light is making it very difficult to see. Well, there's a flower. Uh, as soon as that actually shows a flower, then I can uh, take a Q-tip and pollinate it. This one. Here, this poor guy 
actually had some strawberries draw out before it died from the first batch. But it's coming coming together a little bit better. I know that the quality of this video is not great. In fact, it was probably terrible, but uh, it's coming to life. These, these all should be fine, knock on wood. And uh, hopefully the sacrifice of their brothers and have long, healthy, productive lives is worthwhile.